Hi, welcome to New Physics Involving the Tau Lepton. So there's currently a lot of interest in the particle physics community in observables related to lepton flavor. There have been a number of experimental results in the last few years that have shown small deviations from the standard model expectation. Now none of these experimental results, on its own, has reached the five sigma threshold that is usually required for particle physicists to declare discovery of new physics. But there are enough of these deviations of sufficient size that there is starting to be serious consideration that taken together these results might be a sign of physics beyond the standard model. So in a recent video called New Flavor Physics in LHCb Data, we looked at the measured results of two quantities called RK and RK star from the LHCb collaboration at CERN. Those measurements hinted that there might be an unexpected difference in nature between the electron and the muon. Here, we're going to look at measurements of two quantities that hint at a difference between the tau lepton and the electron and mu. And those two quantities are called Rd and Rd star. Now, the video on Rk and Rk star isn't needed for what we'll look at here, but it does give some background info that might make this video a bit clearer. You might also be interested in the video series on muon g-2, which currently shows a 4.2 sigma deviation from the standard model expectation. Also, in a separate video, we will try to give a summary of the most interesting flavor observables that physicists are currently taking a look at. Okay, so let's mention a few references. So the combined result for Rd and Rd star that will be given at the end of the video is being taken from a paper from the Heavy Flavor Averaging Group. And this paper is a 494 page behemoth and we're only going to be looking at pages 179 through 183. Now that paper from the Heavy Flavor Averaging Group combines results from the Babar, Bell, and LHCb experiments and it also cites theoretical calculations. The references for those papers you can find in the video description below. Now we should say up front that it's not possible to cover three experiments and the combination of the results in a short video and do them justice in any significant way. So the discussion here is definitely going to be a bird's eye view of the experimental situation of Rd and Rd star. Okay, so with that, let's very briefly talk about lepton flavor in the standard model. Okay, so in the standard model of particle physics, we have six quarks and six leptons. And these quarks and leptons interact with the gauge bosons of the standard model. So the photon, the Z, the W plus and minus, and the gluons and also there's the Higgs boson. Now the quarks and leptons are arranged into three families. And these families are identical except for mass terms of the quarks and leptons. Now in the standard model, the three generations of quarks and leptons have the same interactions with the gauge bosons. And the fact that the leptons, the electron, the muon, and the tau, have the same interactions is often referred to as lepton universality. So if we see particle physics processes where the three generations interact differently, except for differences caused by mass terms, that's a sign of physics beyond the standard model. And the experiments discussed here are looking for differences between the interactions of the tau lepton and those of the electron and muon. Okay, so with that, we can start to talk about Rd and Rd star. 
And in fact, we're mostly just going to talk about RD because RD star works almost exactly the same way. So let's take a look at a particle called a B meson. It's not a fundamental particle. It is made of a quark and an antiquark. The antiquark is a B antiquark, which we denote B bar. We'll talk about the identity of the quark in just a moment. Now in the standard model, a B antiquark can turn into a C antiquark by emitting a W particle, which then can decay into a positively charged lepton, which we'll call L, and a neutrino. So this gives the process B bar goes to C bar plus a positively charged lepton and a neutrino. Let's apply this process to our B meson. The B antiquark in the B meson turns into a C antiquark, and a positively charged lepton and a neutrino are emitted. The other quark just goes along for the ride, forming what we will generically call a D meson. Now, when people talk about B mesons, they typically are referring to the case where the other quark is an up quark or a down quark. If it's an up quark, the B meson is a positively charged B plus, and the D is a neutral particle called a D zero bar. If the quark is instead a down quark, the B meson is a B zero, and the D meson is a D minus. Also, we're going to include processes where every particle in this diagram is replaced with its antiparticle. So the cartoon we've drawn here actually represents four different decays, depending on what type of B meson you're starting with. We're going to refer to all of these processes generically as B goes to D L nu. Okay, so now we're ready to talk about the definition of RD. RD is the ratio of the branching fraction of a B meson to a D meson and a tau lepton and a neutrino to the branching fraction of a B meson to a D meson and either an electron and a neutrino or a muon and a neutrino. The branching fraction is just the fraction of the time that a B meson decays in that particular way. The denominator is the average of the electron and muon branching fractions. RD star is the same, but the D meson is replaced with a different meson called a D star. It is very similar to a D meson, but slightly heavier. Okay, so now let's look back at that diagram which mediates these decays that we're interested in in the standard model. In the standard model, the W boson has the same interaction between the three types of leptons, the electron, the muon, and the tau. So it might seem like the standard model prediction for RD and RD star would be one. However, the tau is much heavier than the electron or muon. This will actually reduce the branching fraction to states with taus and make RD and RD star much less than one. The standard model predictions for RD and RD star used by the heavy flavor averaging group are 0 0.299 plus or minus 0 0.003 and 0 0.258 plus or minus 0 0.005 respectively. They get these numbers from averaging results in references 9 through 11 and 10 through 12 that you can find in the video description. Okay, so now we're ready to talk about the experiments. The heavy flavor averaging group look at results from three collaborations. Babar, which was based at SLAC in the USA, Bell, which was at Keck in Japan, and LHCB, which is at CERN on the French-Swiss border. 
Now, Babar and Bell collide electrons and positrons. They collide them at a center of mass energy of 10.58 GeV. At this energy, you can produce a particle called the Upsilon 4s. Babar produced 471 million of these Upsilon 4s particles. And Bell produced 772 million of them. Now the Upsilon 4s particle decays to either charged or neutral B mesons more than 96% of the time. So Babar and Bell produced a lot of B mesons. Then they look for one of these B mesons to decay to D or D star L nu. However, that's not the only thing that a B meson can decay to, so they actually consider over a thousand different decay modes that can happen to the B meson on the other side of the event. Okay, so now LHCb. So LHCb collides protons. And in some of these collisions, you'll produce a B meson, along with some other particles. The B meson typically travels some measurable distance before decaying, and then LHCb looks for the decay of that B meson going to D star tau nu. Now, here I'm brushing over a lot of very important details, so I'm going to briefly mention some complications here. So the tau lepton actually decays in the detector. It has multiple different ways that it can decay, and Babar, Bell, and LHCb make different choices about which tau decays to look for in their detector. Also, the D and D star also decay in the detector. The experiments also make different choices about which D and D star modes to consider in their experiments. And Babar and Bell both measure RD and RD star, whereas LHCb only looks at RD star. Also, Babar and Bell look at both neutral and charged B mesons, whereas LHCb only looks at neutral B mesons. And finally, one very important fact is that there are also experimental background processes which have to be eliminated from your data. So these are processes that are not the process that you're looking for, but that can look like it and be mistaken for it. All of these issues are important, but they're far too much to cover in this short video. Okay, so now we can take a look at the results and combination. Okay, so here are the results from Babar, Bell, and LHCb that are used by the Heavy Flavor Averaging Group. These numbers are just taken from Table 92 in the Heavy Flavor Averaging Group's paper. Now the heavy flavor averaging group gets an average of those values for both RD and RD star, and those values are shown here. They then compare them to the standard model expectation and get a significance. They find that RD is 1.4 sigma above the standard model expectation, and RD star is 2.5 sigma above the standard model expectation. Now, the heavy flavor averaging group combined these results, including correlated uncertainties between the different experiments and between RD and RD star, and they get a difference between measurement and the standard model prediction of the combined result of 3.08 sigma. Now, 3.08 sigma is far from the usual discovery threshold of 5 sigma but the deviation from the standard model expectation is large enough to be interesting. At 3 sigma, oftentimes physicists, although they will not talk about discovery, will start throwing around the word evidence. Okay, so let's briefly summarize. Here we looked at the combination of RD and RD star results from the heavy flavor averaging group collaboration. 
they considered results from Babar, Bell, and LHCB. They find that the current deviation of the combined results from the standard model expectation is 3.08 sigma. And this is one more piece of the flavor puzzle that is currently under investigation by physicists.